And then the mystery of God, of Pentecost. Even though it was already revealed to the first church, the whole first church was complete. And then of course we see religious systems, we see lies, we see uh, heresy, we see things like this where people not understanding the scriptures, we lose that, they call mm -hmm. it the dark age. Oh, What's up, guys? Welcome, welcome <laughs> yeah, to our conversation. Guys, I didn't you even can, realize we were you live. can continue to, to 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 talk. We are starting by someone else digging it. The soft, the yeah. soil became soft, you know. And now it's our turn to take it further to the so next generation. So what we are digging in now? What we're digging think? in, I think, to understanding the Father's heart, like the Father. I feel like this is the time, the revelation of the Father for okay. the whole body. All right. Revelation of sonship. Because, okay. like, for us, it's not a new movement, but for the rest of the body of Christ, it is a newer movement. Yeah. And so, I always saw... So, the spirit of fathership? The spirit of fathership. And then sonship? Sonship. And then, of course, within that, the entire... Seeing the kingdom perspective. You can see from the kingdom perspective. From, from the kingdom perspective. Because right. now it's a, it's a kingdom perspective of family... Yeah. Of a family line instead of a religion. Because I... Just studying church history, it seems like every time there's a revelation that's released, a mystery of God that's released, right? Because mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. it says the mystery, the mystery belongs to God. Once it's revealed, it's to us and our children. Mm -hmm. And looking at every time the mystery of God's released, there's a revival. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, the, the, America, uh, the great awakening in America. It's a revival for salvation where people are like, Jesus saves instantly. Instead of this, you got to mm -hmm. pay for it. It's got to, it's salvations broke out. Then we have Azusa Street, 20 years later, Pentecost breaks out. Then you have Latter Rain, prophetic movement breaks out in the 1940s. 1950s, 60s, 70s, healing movements break out. So every time a side of God is revealed to the body, of course. I believe there's a revival that comes with it. Yeah, because, because there's, there's a, a grace. There's a grace. There is a grace. Yeah, a new yeah. revelation. And on that revelation. And the, the revelation grace. of grace that, became, that came out. Uh, yeah. When it first started coming out, it was the biggest heresy. Now everyone's preaching. Yeah. Yeah. But why you disagree with yeah. the one so you mentioned? Yeah, uh, so you mentioned that um, the the law of the lid, or, yeah. or how, how, yeah, how yeah, you phrased yeah. it. Like, if you're a leader, if, you, if, if you're a seven, yeah. you can only take somebody to a six. Correct. You know, which... I think I, I see that side, but I, I would also disagree a little bit because I think there's the other side. Like if you're truly a leader, yeah. you're going to take someone to their max and their max could be greater than yours. For instance, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Nobody ever has played basketball better than Michael Jordan, but yet he had a coach who was not anywhere near his level, but a coach who saw him and knew how to lead him to maximize his potential. Right. Yeah. And so... I think, I think, I think good leadership. But could we agree? Like Michael, there is clearly the progression. There's always this progression. There's always a gift. Like, hey, this person is gifted for this. Michael Jordan was a gift, right? Or yeah. And in basketball. And that gift expanded new horizons. But then you see like a Kobe Bryant and the rest, they replicated Michael Jordan. They never got to the same level because they replicated. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kobe Bryant, but there's but, now you got a Steph Curry, right? Cur we're, now, we're talking about basketball here, yeah, but yeah, yeah, now yeah, we got yeah. a completely different type of leader, I yeah. and no he's creating. What you're talking about? I I don't know who is Michael Jordan. I don't even know what you guys. Are. <laughs> let's let's come back to the kingdom of God. Can, Can we yes. talk about the apostles' no, no. prophets? Imagine the center. This is this is this is kingdom. I, I think I think I, I think he's saying something interesting. So so imagine you're absolutely right. So. If people duplicate that leader, they're yeah. never going to get him. But there's other leaders, right? Like a Steph Curry. He created a completely different way of, of playing the game, of, of leading. And now he's expanding a whole nother demographic of people who aren't as athletic, who can't jump as high. And now they're, he's able to create something. So, so his coach basically looked at his potential. And this is what I think where, where, where leadership kicks in is when you look at someone's potential and you begin in a way to study their potential. You see the grace on their life. You see the grace on their life. The gift of their and life. And I think a good leader is someone who can see the grace on their life, the gift on their life, yes. and actually expand them and study their gift to expand them. Yes. Where like that idea, you know, where, where some uh, pastors would say where, that you know, I want I want my ceiling to become your floor. I want mm -hmm. to take you to a, a, everything I've done yeah. is to set up like my dad. 
you know, he got us to, to this nation. We immigrated. He did everything he could for us because he knew that he he's only a, a platform for us now to be who we are. Correct. Right? Yeah. And so I, I, I see the idea of don't, you know, you're, you're a lid, but at the same time, also there's the other side of it where we're not propelling the next generation to do what we can, what we can't do. Yeah. Just like we were propelled to go yeah. places where the former generation hasn't been yeah. able to go. And I feel like it's that scripture where it's the mystery of God is revealed in a time and in a season. The mystery of God was revealed to previous generations. You know, we were talking just a little bit ago, you know, the great awakening, mystery of God about salvation. It's like this. If you just call on the name of Jesus, yeah. you, you confess him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And then the mystery of God of Pentecost, even though it was already revealed to the first church, the whole first church was complete. And then, of course, we see religious systems, we see lies, we see uh, heresy, we see things like this where people not understanding the scriptures, we lose that. Uh, they mm -hmm. call it the dark age, right? And so the mystery of God for every generation is revealed. We're taking from previous generations. Yeah. Like we're not, there's no new mystery the mis we've been taking it from uh, latter rain, prophetic movement, from the 50s, 60s, the faith movement, 1990, when uh, the, the word of faith movement, things yeah. like that, yeah. where we yeah. see these moves of God happening, but now it's, okay, so we've come to this moment, now we need to f dig into ours, where God will yeah. reveal, hey, this is the mystery, yeah. and I believe it's the Father. Yeah. Like, the Father needs to be revealed. We've known about the Son, but like you say, Andre, the son leads to somebody. Yes. The son leads to the father. No one comes to the father. So Jesus was mentioned that, you know, through the whole New Testament, I mean, through the three years of his ministry on this earth. You know, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And he doesn't stop there. Mm. Usually we stop there. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mind that when we're dealing with the salvation and we invite people, you know, to receive Jesus Christ as a personal savior. But Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father. Father. Yeah. So we really need to allow Holy Spirit to reveal the Father's heart mm -hmm. and the whole idea of fatherhood, you know. But the moment we're dealing with Father, we're dealing with the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing Correct. with the with the God, His world now, where He is a King. Let Your kingdom come, and the kingdom of God. Who is the God? God of Father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we see uh, this huge movement right now, the revelation of the kingdom of God, yeah. because we're dealing with the, you know, we, we, we are in the last days, we're dealing with harvest, we're dealing with sonship, yeah. because sonship, harvest belongs to, to sonship, and yeah. son, sons will take responsibility, all the creation waiting for what? For sons to be revealed. Yeah. Yeah. So we're dealing with the whole creation. So we're dealing, when we're dealing with the whole creation, we're dealing with the harvest time. When we're dealing with the harvest time, uh, we, we see that sons, they will know who they are. So They're, good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The sons will take responsibility. Yeah. They will use their uh, uh, calling, authority, power on earth. And, and, and uh, I believe uh, yeah. it's, it's the thing so about, I think it's interesting about the revelation of the father, Andre, is you can't, be a good father until you've learned how to be a good son. So sometimes me having spiritual fathers in my life, I'm able to help older people learn how to be fathers who never were fathered correctly. You know, because it's like, it's like when, when you, when you have pain and you, and you didn't, and you weren't fathered correctly, like you yeah. can't be a good father until yeah. you, until, until you've had the revelation of being a good son. Yeah. Right. Because you're first a son before you become a father. And so I think one of the things our generation gets to do is we get to help fathers learn what a good son is. Yeah. Right. And so us being healed, we get can help the former generation be healed. For instance, in our family, we grew up, you know, like in the Slavic culture, you're you're not very like emotional. Well, maybe not even emotional, but you're not like huggy. You're not touchy. Like you don't kiss your mom. Like it, in our family, you that don't wasn't talk a, about feelings. Yeah. That wasn't a thing. Yeah. I remember the first time I hugged my brother Vic. Like legit. It was, uh, we, we got in a little argument. We were in high school. I was a senior. I think he was a junior. And one of one of our friends that was there, a girl, she was like, she was like, so I was like, hey, Vic, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that to you. And she was like, hug him. I was like, we don't hug. And so like, I learned this, this embrace and I learned this like, okay, I can, this actually is normal. 
And I remember the first time I saw my friends doing it to, to their parents, the relationship they had. And yeah. for us, like, I don't kiss my mom. Like, that's weird. Like, yeah. and I remember the first time I was like, because now I saw an example of how to be a good son, I can now help my mom be a good mom and my dad be a good dad by like bringing that being healed and coming up and like, hey, mom, I love you. And we were able to bring healing yeah. to a generation that never saw the prior generation. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. And so it's like we, when we learn how to be good sons, we can actually train the former generation how to be good fathers Yeah. by, be, by being healthy. And what's interesting is like we're, this is a generation, this is a time we really are activating gifts, right? Gifts, prophetic gifts, faith gifts, healing gifts. That, and just something how God's really been impacting is like, why the prophetic gift? Like, what's the essence? What's the reason for the gifts? And he answers in regards to the prophetic gift. He talks about John the Baptist. And he says, John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah, which mm -hmm. represents prophecy, mm -hmm. which represents Old Testament prophecy. Mm -hmm. And he says he had the spirit of Elijah to bring the rebellious heart back to God and to bring fathers back to sons. Yeah. Like, and the, the Holy the Spirit fathers. showed me the essence of prophecy. It's not to guess numbers. It's not to even do anything. Like, if none of, if that is not working to restore relationships with fathers and sons, with people for one another and people back to God, you're missing the whole point of gifts. Mm. And that's, that's when you, when you understand the essence, God starts trusting you with, with the words and, and things like that, where you're like, this is, becomes easy. As long as my essence, as long as my goal, this is the goal of the gift. Is the goal working? Is it restoring relationships? And is it restoring relationships with the so father, good. physical fathers and sons, and spiritual father and son? So good. So it, it becomes, I think, for this generation, it takes this pressure off. You know, because we're all about gifts. Like right now in the school, we're learning about gifts. And I'm like, guys... If we can get this Shout revelation. out real quick to the school. I'm actually here this week Yes. for Kingdom Domain College. I get a chance to teach. Actually, we're t t talking about one of the gifts. Uh, the last couple days I got a chance to teach on even uh, dealing with demons, deliverance, and different things. So quick shout out. If you need a good school to come to, Kingdom Domain College is one of the best of the best, the cream of the crop. I'm telling you. Yeah. And this yeah, guy right here is one of the directors. Of you. He's one of the teachers. Of you. I mean, the way God is uh, moving through you, the way God is leading through you, I mean, we honor you as a gift here. Yeah. Amazing, amazing work. Amazing, uh, just so amazing to see what God is doing, uh, you know, here at KDC, Kingdom Domain College. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been an amazing year. Like, it's just been an amazing year. And, um, you know, culture is really big for us. Huge. And it's culture, beautiful what you guys did. Culture is uh, the main, you know, one of the main uh foundations of this and family is part of that culture and so when you get to do it together as a family you get to take risks you get to make even mistakes yeah. but it's not sin or not sin mistakes it's how to yeah. grow in operating and, and stewarding what god has given you so yeah guys we'd love to have you if you're so interested good. see vision it's what we are doing but the culture is yeah. the way we are doing mm. so methods is the way we're doing everyday life it's not just uh, you know in terms of ministry yeah but you know the whole vision it's the way we live the whole core culture is the way uh, we do things you know what vision i mean vision it's what we're doing yeah. and the culture is the way yeah we're doing things and, and i love how at kdc at kingdom domain college you guys are very intentional about culture yeah because the thing about culture is culture is always being set whether it's intentional or unintentional yeah and so I love how you guys are so intentional. You walk in, even as a teacher, like right away you can see the culture of honor when you walk in. You right away see the culture of like a rev like even being reverent to a gift, honoring other people. And right away you feel a culture. Every like I mean, I get a chance to travel all over and yeah. you get to see different kinds of cultures. And it's a replication of leadership. And I love how you guys are so intentional about building that. Yeah. And so when you come to Kingdom Domain College, I know some of you are graduating high school, you, you don't know what to do next. Listen, this is summertime's coming. Sign up. This is a good place to be because this is a place where you're going to learn not just any culture, but kingdom culture. Yeah. And it's a place where you're going to you're going to thrive yeah. in every area of your life. It's not you're not just coming here to learn Bible, but you're going to thrive in real estate. If you go to real estate, <laughs> business, being a doctor, wherever, because you're yeah, learning worship, a culture yeah. that goes into all kind of culture. Yeah. And that's our job. It's just our job is not to tell them where they're going to go. That's between them and God. That's the passion. That's the gift in their life. Our job is to equip them for every good work. So where good. they are saying, hey, I'm free. I know who I am. I know who, I, who my father is. I know who I am in him. And I'm equipped for every good work. And now it's just, what's your passion? 
What so is it? Good. So if you're if you're stuck, if you're taking a year, you're like, hey, time goes by fast. Nine months went by so fast. Come on. I'm telling you, especially what's happening right now every morning. Yes. Uh, during the worship. It's like, beautiful. Tell us, it's, it's something just, mm. something happened like a few months ago, I think, or even yeah. more. Yeah. Like we never had this before. I mean, always, the worship always been good here, you know, yeah. but something happened like, I don't know, three, four months ago. We really, God's really been taking us through this process where we, used to, you know, you have a clock and, and we, we have a human clock where, hey, we start at nine, we end at 10. God doesn't have a clock. And I remember just kind of spending some time and said, God, how do we increase? Mm. How do we increase the presence? Because you're going through it, you're going every day. So you're like, okay, you get used to it. And he says, turn off the clock. You'll know when it's a good set, when the spirit of God flows yeah. and he does what he needs to do. Yeah. That's when you know, okay. And we're talking about college. We're not so talking good. about awakening services. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I say awakening, we're, we're, we're it's talking a about structured <laughs> system. <laughs> yeah, structured we system. need to teach people. We need to equip yeah. young yeah. people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, and that's when the moment. You know, a lot of people say spirit led, spirit led. We tell our speakers we truly are spirit led. Mm. Per the program, you're supposed to start at ten thirty. But if Holy Spirit takes over. Yeah. We, not might, we might not have a morning session because yeah. we've had those times yeah. where it's just like we didn't have a morning session. I came for one of those sessions and I ended up not having a session. Not having a session. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect, yeah. Because the Holy because Spirit, I love it. In, uh, is it in 1 John somewhere it says that when the Holy Spirit teaches, you don't need anybody else to teach. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. And, yeah. and, and you guys give room for that. I love that other scripture says that a man plans his ways and you guys do a great job of planning. Like yeah. you guys are excellent. But I love that you guys are also... You can also focus on that second part is let a man plans Lord. his ways, but the Lord, let the Lord direct. Yeah. We, we plan, we yeah. do our job, we yeah. are diligent. You know, we're not lazy because some people yeah. are like, oh, let the Lord do. And they're like, okay, yeah. you didn't set anything up, the Lord ain't going to show up. Yeah. But you're diligent to do it. And when God shows up, you give freedom for God to teach. And it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think something that we've really realized is the whole body being equipped. And we got this where I, we start seeing Holy Spirit resting on people. Like... I can't explain it. You just see mm. them resting. And and I haven't really shared this. This is the kind of the first time I'm kind of sharing it, it with the public where uh, something shifted uh, like at the end of last year, beginning of this year, where we just started like he's resting on them. Mm. Because we understand physically for one person to minister, maybe an hour, hour and a half max. Andre could probably do four. Uh, Andre could probably do four. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and only in the area of my gift. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually uh, this Monday... Uh, I was speaking probably like more than five, six hours straight yeah. here. Yeah, we gather together as our leadership here That's for, the no like for the whole day. For the whole day, I was like, "Would you guys, would you guys, uh, you know, come for one day and let me, uh, let me speak the way I think, you know, the whole concept of the kingdom." It. Yeah. That's so good. we were here like I don't know from morning to evening. Yeah, we were here from ten till eight, yeah, eight, till eight p.m. And yeah, I was speaking because I was Come under on. the umbrella of my, of my yeah, gift. Yeah. There's a grace for that, you know. Yeah, but anyway. so good. Yeah. It was really good. And so when you... When but you're yeah, so, you're saying like you can't, you can't go for long. Like, you can't go for long. Yeah. And, and there has to be a, tra a training. Like you can't give someone a mic and expect yeah. them to go for long. Five minutes maybe they'll have. And so it's been such a good platform for us to just see, okay, this, like today we had amazing worship again. Mm -hmm. And me and you were mm -hmm. kind of talking about, we have someone who's very structured and we have someone who's very prophetic. And if we just let so good. one person who's just very prophetic, they're going to be all over the place. Yep. And for an hour and a half, you're going to be like, we're never going to land this thing because <laughs> yeah. we don't even it's know where mess. we're at. Yeah. And then if we have the opposite where it's just structured, you're kind of like, mm. hey, we need to get some life in here. Like we know that we're going through those songs and God's just showing us like, hey, use both. Both are so essential. Both are so, so essential. Needed. And it's even, it's interesting, even when Jesus sent p disciples out in two, he said, he sent the teacher and the prophet. Mm. They're complete opposites. One's very structured in the word, the other one flows in the spirit. Mm. Like, they don't always get along, but he sent them out because he understands you need both. And so we're just starting to see that and really manifest. And I feel like that's why it's, it's becoming consistent. Every day we're seeing God show up in a mighty way because we're like, who is God resting on? It's not like, oh, this is the only way we know. Mm. We're, we're, we're learning to break those systems. Like, hey, God's resting on you. Let us set you up so you can flow in this. So if it's good. 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes. But you saw how it was. It, just, it was like 15, 20 minutes at the end, but it just... Yeah, it, the, it unlocked something unlocked, in the atmosphere. It unlocked. And even unlocked something in her life where it was just like... 
And she just went into, God, you restored. You restore all things. And it yeah. just was a powerful moment. And this is the beauty, I think, of why everything was in Jesus. But that's why he gave the fivefold ministry. Because yeah. each one functions uniquely. Yeah. And each one is, is unique. And so it's like when you honor the different Finally, gifts. Finally, touching this. I was like, I don't even know how to start it. You know, we, we, we've been in life, I don't know for how long. 20, 30 minutes or 15 wow. minutes. And, and, there and it is. everything is there's, happening there's natural. And I was like, I don't want to even touch. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, you know, yeah. because the way God is leading us yeah. right now. It's the we beauty did, of did, different anointings. We didn't plan this. It just it goes yeah. natural. So you, you continue. Uh, you please talk, yeah. talk yeah. about fivefold ministry. <laughs> Because we, we're going to have a vision conference. Uh, upcoming next May. weekend. Next Let's weekend. Let's May, go. May 6, 7, 8. Guys, listen. I'm flying in. Vision it's conference. It's going to be amazing. Listen, mm -hmm. we believe God is doing something tremendous right now. This hour, we, we just want to, we just want to, we want to allow him to correct us. Yeah. Listen, I was at the mountains. Uh, Real quick. Vision conference. What's the focus this year? I think the focus of vision conference this year that's before you get about, to the mountains. That's what I'm about okay, to touch. You're, you're, that's you know? where you're going. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going. I'm so with excited. This isn't, this isn't just another conference. Yes. This yeah. is a strategic conference for leaders who are leading, like it's truly leading. I'm so excited for this one specifically. I'm sorry. Even but, I think for the body to understand. Yes. For the body and it gives so it's, much clarity. Oh man. Yeah. Yes. Tell so us gonna, about the mountains, We're going to touch some details. We're going to touch, because usually when people talk about even apostolic ministry, you know, apostolic gift, yeah. usually they talk about more the fruit of mm. apostolic gift, not the function, not the, the way it sees and it's, acts. Yes, the, the whole function of apostolic gift. Most of the time we're talking about fruit. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to touch some good stuff uh, in yeah, terms of fivefold ministry, but God plays and put four words inside of me. What's interesting, uh, he just dropped, you know, in my spirit, in English. Come on. I was like, that's You know that's I'm revival. That's revival. I'm telling, right you, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been speaking so much in Russian, and even though uh, sometimes it's, it's difficult for me to, to flow in English, but this is my season now to, to begin to do this, you know. That's why every Thursday night, probably f from now, every Thursday night here at the studio, we're gonna we're gonna do, you know, um, light broadcasting in, uh, in English. Thursday and night thunder from yes, Andre Shapoval. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna call the voice of leadership. Let's go. The I voice like of it. leadership. So we're gonna touch different on. subjects, uh, especially with my wife. I was like, I need to do some programs with you, uh, with my wife Natasha. Listen. So God spoke to me with the four words. Correction, direction, protection, and perfection. Mm. You know, in the beginning of this year, Pastor Serge know, know that uh, God showed me that something crazy is going to happen this year, like around the world. And I spoke about this, you know, during our Sunday service, and I released that prophetic word. But he did not explain to me details, you know. But when he spoke to me with these four words, he told me that this is the year of correction. Hmm. He said, this is the year of correction. And, and, and Can you explain correction? What yes. do you mean? He said, think globally. Don't think just, uh, you know. Locally or by Locally, yourself. but think globally. The corrections. Like course correction. Yes. It's happening around the world right now. On earth. He's, God's, God is dealing with earth. God, his will on earth. Yeah. Mm. So when we're talking about when we when we talk about his will, we need to see much. We need to see nations. Yeah, we, we need, need to, to see we need body. to see the whole earth, you know, and what God is doing here right now in this earth, on this earth. I'm sorry. So here is the thing. He 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 spoke to me. He said, "This is the year of correction, correction from Isaiah 40. It says a voice uh, cries. Mm. That's why we're going to call it voice of leaders, you know. I like it. Uh, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Mm. So, because usually when we talk about correction, we think from that bad side, you know. Yeah. yeah. But no, he's bringing everything with the alignment with the kingdom of God, with heaven. Yeah. Because his prayer, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth. So when he, I believe he's correcting the whole Alignment. Lead, leadership system. Hmm. Wow. 
It's so good. The whole leadership system, the way we lead so everything. We, we're talking about, you know, pol pol politics. We're talking about business world. We're talking mm. about church. I, I believe church is the most important in his dealing with the, with the leadership inside of the church. Can and he's correcting things, you know, the, the spirit of leadership. Yeah. He's correcting the spirit of leadership because uh, the spirit of leadership must come from the Father's heart. That's mm. what we talk about, yeah. you know. Here on this so it program. starts with the body first. It's gonna start. So with the when we first. allow him to correct us, and we are there now as the leaders here locally, mm -hmm. even locally at Flame of Fire Ministry, we, we see what God is doing. Like He's correcting us. We we've been apologized. We've been uh, you know ask one another for forgiveness because we didn't recognize mm -hmm. uh, the gift you know the gift upon people's life and grace. You know we we've been dealing this even yesterday. You know. Yeah. With some leaders like god just told us you know you have to bring those guys uh, to the office you need to talk to them you didn't recognize the grace upon their life and we just want to honor them we, we we allow him to correct us that's great because yeah. when you allow him to correct you he's going to show you direction when correction take place you're going to see direction mm. yeah you're going to see his direction when you are walking in his direction you're gonna experience his protection. That's, That's great. Good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're gonna be under his umbrella of lordship. You're gonna experience life under his lordship. You're gonna be under his protection. When you deal in uh, or when you experience his lordship, every time you touch lordship, you need to understand that now you're dealing with the kingdom of God. He's a king. So everything which you're gonna experience uh, walking under his lordship he's gonna do for you not because you deserve that he's gonna do it because of his own sake to protect his reputation so that's why you're gonna see perfection that's why you're gonna see you know perfection comes under the after the uh, protection so he spoke to me he said correction will lead you to direction 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 will allow you to live under my protection even though we all know that we are his protection yeah, right now but yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there is a different degree yes. like we're gonna yeah. experience something different and then we're gonna see his perfection so wow. i believe that we are now here in the area of correction and especially when we talk about leadership and i believe god's gonna god's gonna restore his hand on earth because hand represent his power yeah and hand represent the fivefold ministry Mm. This is the way he led the church, yeah. and uh, we, and when we talk about fivefold ministry, we're gonna talk about you know apostolic gift and prophetic gift and then and all that stuff. Pastor, so that's why, pastor. that's why people, if you need to fly here, you need to come here next week, uh, May six, seven, eight. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, some great time here at Flame of Fire Ministry, you know, uh, with the Vision Conference. So you need to be here. Come on, I'm excited. Fire it's going to be amazing. Yes, yes. So you mentioned Five for Ministry. I yeah, don't know where we yeah, stop, you know. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we were talking about, like, just the importance of, like, you were talking about the two girls that today that yeah. left. Just the importance of the different uh, offices that God has given, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I think, I think it's so cool to see that even the, the beautiful that Jesus said now, I'm releasing the fivefold ministry because everything was in him. He was yeah. all five. Yeah. But now he's like, it's not going to be on one. It's, not a it's one gonna be form. on. So honoring the anointing, uh, even the importance of the culture of honor, yeah. honoring what's on you, honoring what's on the next person, honoring what's on the next person, and that the beauty that you know there's wisdom in the counsel of one. No, yeah. but also there's wisdom in the counsel of many. Many. And so when when you see the different perspectives, you get a bigger picture. Because we prophesy in part, we see in prophesy. I mean, we see in part, we know in part. Yeah. You know, but but then when when we have everyone's part, we see yeah. a bigger, more beautiful picture of what the reality is. Yeah, and I think honor has been a really big topic for for myself personally and and, and our ministry. And it's a question I, I even want to ask our audience right now. We have a goal as a body of Christ, right? I'm sure you guys have a goal if you're a leader, if you're a pastor, if you're a home group leader, if you're leading youth, if you're leading, if you're mentoring someone, you have a goal. Like, what do you want that person to look like? Like, what do you want that person to look like, right? You're, you're pouring out, but you want them to be 
what do you want that finished product to be? That, yeah. that person. That, that's good. And, and that's Holy Spirit said, what do you want them to look like? Mm. What do you guys want your students to look like? What do you want the people that are under your, your leadership to look like? And I'm like, well, God, it's, that's easy. You know? We want them to be free. We want them to know their identity. We want them to be empowered. We want them to be powerful people. Mm. They're sons and daughters of the kingdom. The, wor- the whole world is waiting for the sons uh, to be revealed. We want them to be able to think for themselves. We want them to be courageous and bold and faith. And he says, how to be do you, you, to be responsible, to be mm-hmm. accountable, to be ethical, to be humble. He says, how do you lead that kind of person? Who's, all, who, who's gotten there. Who's gotten You're trying there. to get them to get there, so they get there. They become powerful. Yes. Yes. They how know their identity. How do you people? lead someone who's powerful? How do you lead someone who's free? How do you lead someone who's, who's, who's much strong. stronger than you? Yeah. 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 And that's so to good. deal with the strong people around you. So good. And in a way, it's how does God lead us? Because mm. he takes us there. That's good. How does God lead his people right now? It's not through manipulation. Not it's from not the through, control. Not from control. It's not from fear. He leads us through honor. Love opens the door, honors the method that raises us up. Come on. Say that again. That was so good. Love opens the door to our hearts, Mm. but honor lifts us up. Honor lifts us up. So good. There's a scripture, and 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 I won't go into, I won't read it for the sake of time, but Jesus is walking down the road, and this is the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus Luke runs chapter 19. Luke, no, oh my God, see, it's good to have laundry. Yeah, Luke <laughs> chapter 19. If you want to read it, you can read it. <laughs> the, the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is in the tree. Zacchaeus is in the tree. Jesus is just walking, hun- I don't know, people around him everywhere. Everyone yeah. wants his attention. He is the guest that everyone wants to be around. Mm. He gets to the tree and he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus. He uses word of knowledge to know his name. Like, 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 let's be honest, he's dependent on the Holy Spirit. Just like we are dependent on the Holy Spirit and we get words of knowledge, he gets the same thing. He gets word of knowledge for Zacchaeus. Like, hey, Zacchaeus, I know who you are. Mm. Zacchaeus comes down the tree. The word of knowledge did not change Zacchaeus' life yet. Like, he's coming down the tree. He's like, wow, this is exciting. But his life has not changed. Yeah. It opens the door. Yes. The grace gift which every gift is from God, Mm -hmm. opens the door. Mm. But now we have a role to play. And Jesus says, Zacchaeus. I must be at your house. I must be in your house. Mm. In the Jewish culture, whoever guests you become, you are held to that same esteem as they are. You associate yourself. You're associating yourself. You're saying, I am worthy to be in your presence. Mm. And when he said that, that's why the teachers, the Pharisees were so, they, they said, Do, does he not understand mm. what he is doing right now? Does he not understand how much he is lowering himself because he's going to go and be in a house of a sinner? But they didn't understand. He wasn't lowering himself. He was raising Zacchaeus up. Mm. It says, and when Zacchaeus understood this, it says, I am worthy of your presence, Zacchaeus. Jesus honored him. Mm. Where he was at, he honored him. He lifted him up where it broke Zacchaeus. Meaning, he says, Lord, whatever I have, I will give half to the poor. If I cheated anyone, I will give back four times. Mm. Honor lifted him up. Honor changed his life. You see, we know God loves us. We've heard that over and over again. But he doesn't love us and pet us in the corner. He says, there, 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 there. He loves us. He, that opens the door for him, but he honors us. Says, mm-hmm. As I am, so are you. Mm. You are seated with me in heavenly places. You're mm. not hanging between heaven and hell and hoping that one day you're going to get it. He says, you are seated with me in heavenly places. You get a crown. So good. He, and that's what brings us up. And so this is just this power of honor. So good. This has to be the method for us as leaders in, in this day and age. This has to be the method that we are leading from. Yeah. This has to be the method. Love will open the door to their heart, but honor will raise them up. Honor will raise them up. And this has been a scripture, Andre, that me and you have discussed. How a man thinks, 
So yes. they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can go into that because that's just no, something. I think we'll do this next time. It's okay. Be a good topic for us yeah. like next time. But I just want to stay in the area of honor because yeah. I believe that's exactly what God did for us. Yeah. What's beautiful he, about he honor? He raised us into yeah. the same level of his son. That's why he called us sons. The way the way he see Jesus, the way he saw Jesus on earth in flesh. Yeah. I, I think it's such an honor what we have now in the kingdom of God yeah. uh, through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. And it's such an honor. And we need to teach people and we need to learn how to lead, yeah. you know, out of honor one another, you know, how to honor the gift mm -hmm. and how to see people from the kingdom perspective, you know. It's there's spiritual principles. We, we have physical principles. We know gravity. If, if I drop this phone, it's going to fall. The sprint, uh, principle of gravity is going to take place. There are spiritual principles. And for some reason, the body, we've just not done a good enough job of explaining spiritual principles. Every principle has uh, action and reaction. Honor your father and mother. It will go well with you. Mm -hmm. Honor a prophet. You will get a reward. Mm -hmm. The principle, the spiritual principle of honor is rewarding. So when people want to grow, they tell me, Serge, how do you grow? How do you grow in business? How do you grow in ministry? How do you grow here? How do you grow here? We're seeing you're always growing. I said, I understand this principle of honor that I lack. I don't have all the answers. I, yeah. I don't have grace for everything. But you have a grace on your life. You have a grace on your life. And the principle of honor rewards me because mm -hmm. I can see the grace on your life. That's great. And so I can good. come under that. So good. I don't have to dig my own. So because good. the grace on your life is human manifestation. Like Solomon manifested wisdom physically. You know what I mean? Like what is wisdom? How does wisdom put a, a, a banquet table together? Yeah. That's how wisdom puts a banquet table. Where Queen Sheba is like, I've heard of wisdom. I've heard about you. But now I've seen yeah. the manifestation. Yeah, that's good. And so when we get to see the manifestations that we understand that people are the gift. That's good. That people are the gift. And whatever I lack, and God's been showing me, he says, Serge, your breakthrough, there's certain breakthrough you get in prayer, certain breakthrough you get in fasting, certain breakthrough you get in word, some burn, certain breakthrough you get in faith, certain breakthrough you only come in through honor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. a lot of times he hides it in your competition. So good. The, bi the biggest three breakthroughs I ever had financially it was, it was in my competition. Mm. When I'm looking at my competition wow. and they're making more money than me. And I said, God, they're not even righteous. They're not even God-fearing people. Say it more. Then I, I feel like we all need to hear that. Because I, I know, I know you, you told me this before. and I, I, It's so powerful mm. what God taught you through this. The three biggest financial breakthroughs I ever had in my, in my own personal life. In, didn't in, came from prayer. Did not come from prayer. I'm praying. I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord for months. And he's like, and he's putting on my heart to go meet with a person. And, and I'm talking to people about this person and they're like, you don't want to go meet with him. He's not perfect. They're telling me about his personal life. They're telling me how he doesn't do everything perfect. And Holy Spirit just still like, you want your breakthrough? You need. And he started showing me the story of David. He says, was David perfect? Was David a great father? No. Was David a great husband? No. Did David do everything perfect? No. But there was two things from after the spirit of God, you got to see a person after the spirit. There is a spirit for him for battle. We understand. David says in Psalms, you train my hands for battle. Mm -hmm. And he had, a, he had a grace for worship. A, such a grace that us as the body of 3,000 years are still not caught up as. And if you just honor that grace under his life, because that's from God. That's not man. That's not man's ability. It's a grace from God you will have access to it. David's men had access to that because David was not the only giant killer. His men were the only giant killers in the land. No other army can kill giants except David's men. That's good. And because they honored him, they saw that. And so I'm sitting and I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm trying, I'm doing everything that I know how to do. Even as a pastor, I'm doing it. And he's like, the key to this breakthrough is honor search. When you can look at your competition, even though they're not perfect, maybe mm. they're not a perfect dad, maybe they're not a perfect husband, maybe they're not a perfect minister, but you can look at them and say, hey, this, what you have, I need this. And so the story goes, I actually take, I call him, I don't have a relationship with this guy. And I call him and I, I take him out for lunch. And so I'm calling him and he says, you know what's interesting? I just saw your billboard and I felt like 
I need to meet with you. I know me and you don't have a relationship. People talk. They try to make us competition because, you know, we're both in the same age. He's actually younger than me. He's three years younger. So, you know, you got, you got to swallow some pride there. Mm-hmm. And, and I just felt like I need to come and honor him. Not look at the things that he does not do great. Not look at his inabilities, but look at the grace on his life. So good. And we're coming to lunch and we're just talking, making small talk. And I'm not expecting anything. Because I understand, it's the first time I'm ever meeting him. And as I'm eating, just eating food, an idea comes of how to make my business go, grow in millions. Literally wow. grow in millions. Hmm. It came a year and a half ago. Everyone to this day is like, you guys are going to go national into every state because of this idea. And I got my breakthrough. And this is just one story. I got my breakthrough just because I honored the gift on his life. Sure. And so Honor can only happen in humility yes if there's any pride you cannot honor yeah here's the next question honoring the unhonorable because that's what david did when you're talking about the story of david look what he did with saul yeah he honored him he could have taken him out he could have done all these things but the way he honored even someone who's not honorable yeah you know what i mean i think that can open the door i think you know honor your father and mother we get that it's my father, it's my mother, I need to honor. Okay, a prophet, okay. But what about honoring somebody yeah. like Zacchaeus? Yeah. Not honorable. What about honoring someone like Saul, like David did? Yeah. You know, and what that began to do, because when you honor somebody, you unlock their blessing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so not even honoring someone for my gain. Yeah. But how about I honor Serge because of what you, honor what's on your life, and that can open up unbelievable doors for you. Yeah. And I feel like there's such a key in this that us as the body are, are need to realize because the enemy understands this too. He understands the spiritual principle. He understands how all of this works. And God said, isn't this interesting that one of his names is he's the accuser of the brethren. He understands this so much that that's one of his names. He's the accuser of the brethren. I mean, he has some names. He doesn't have that much names, but that's one of them. And the Holy Spirit said, don't you think there's something there where the enemy understands, oh, sure. they're not going to get certain sure. breakthroughs. Yep. The body will not get to a point Say where it. they need to get to. Say it. Because instead of being able to see after the Spirit, yes. what is on this person, yes. the grace that I need, because yes. I do not have it, and I will not have access to it unless I honor. So instead, good. the enemy says, hey, accuse. Look, he's not a perfect here and here. He's mm. not a perfect this and this. Mm. He's not a perfect this and this. And I can I almost want to prophesy to some people. Come on, say it. The people that maybe the enemy wants you to accuse, your competition, the people that maybe are your peers and you're saying, I see all the flaws. I can tell you, your breakthrough can come in that area if you learn to honor them. So good. Where you learn to see them after the spirit, like you're saying, the people that are not honorable the Zacchaeuses, the saws of this world, but there's still a grace and an anointing on their life that like, hey, if I learn to just tap into that, yeah. my breakthrough will come. Yeah. My breakthrough will come because now I'm not siding with the enemy of darkness where mm. an accuser of the brother. Like we have to be aware, hey, if I'm becoming an accuser, I'm under a different lordship. Which lordship? Yep. Not the, not the kingdom of God, the kingdom of darkness. Because mm. that, that title is taken with him, with the enemy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I can see the way Jesus saw. So we, we always pray, God, I want to see the way you see. He keeps saying, I want to see the way you see. We have an opportunity to see the way we, he sees. And he sees the grace. He'll correct. Like you said, God prunes. We're, we don't prune anyone. We can't make anyone do anything. Holy Spirit does. So we're, we're more worried about pr- pruning them and correcting them all the time. When we just need to see the gift and say, hey, this gift we need as a body. So hey, good. I need this gift because I need a breakthrough in this life or in the that you carry so well. Mm. So good. So good. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, anyways, time flies, flies like, like crazy. Anyways, tomorrow, Mish, uh, first of all, we honor you. Yeah, we really, love you. We honor you. We you, love man. you. Thank you so much for... Coming here all the time. Family. Yeah, yeah. We are family. We are family. And uh, you are speaking here yeah. in tomorrow. college. But then oh, yeah. tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow, a youth conference. First ever first FFM ever. youth conference, yes. Neos Conf. Guys, get here. If you know somebody in middle school, high school, or college, send in this live stream, number one. 
Number two, send him a send him a flyer. Get him here. Yeah. Here in Sacramento. Get out here. It's gonna be so so excited. Got two of my friends coming out here speaking yeah. also. Thanks for having us out here. We got it. We got like, coming all the way from Chicago. Like, listen, we got I Mr. Like, Matt. I and feel Dylan. like I am old now. <laughs> <laughs> like what is going on? Usually I I was organizing all the youth conferences, you know, but this time it's like over the hill, man. <laughs> Our, you know, our young people, I mean, young leaders, you know, organizing this. And I was like, no way. First time ever I will come there. As a guest. As a guest. <laughs> so it's very No, it's exciting. I think it's a new era at FFM. And yeah. I think it's, it's a new era of, you know, of really seeing and propelling this next generation, you yeah. know. Um, the tail end of this generation and even the next generation Gen Z. Yeah. And I really That's believe exactly God is doing something special. You, like what do you see in this next generation? Yeah. Like what do you see in them, like inside of them? Like yeah. what do you see? Because you've been traveling a lot. Uh, like what do you see yeah. in this? You know what's interesting about this generation? A lot generation. of people want to talk down on this generation and maybe this generation, and for sure every generation has its unique moments in history and they're created for certain times. You know, you got the yeah. hardworking generation, then you got the generation that reaps the blessing. What's interesting about this generation, what I'm seeing in Gen Z and, and this generation is, this is probably one of the most creative, innovative, um, gifted. Lazy, yes, maybe, a little bit. Certain gifts, maybe they, they're, they're not in, but there is something that we're talking about honor. Yeah. And when you honor what's on this generation, yeah. I think this generation carries something so special. And I really believe that this generation was created for such a time as this, obviously like God, puts giftings in you for each generation. Yeah. And if we're going to see a move of God in this next generation, it's going to happen with this next set of gifts. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we've seen moves of God and throughout different generations. This one's going to be unique. This, so this, this one's going to be we'll special. Have different approach, huh? And it's like, I wasn't in high school during COVID because I wasn't anointed to go through high school and COVID, you know, like I'm older, you yeah. know, but these guys, they were anointed to go through some of these crazy things that are happening right now in culture, in society, in politics. There, God gives you an anointing for that season. And I really feel like there is something so special and so unique on this generation so that good. if we just bless them and honor them, we're going to see something so special released to this generation. So I'm so excited for this weekend wow. and what God is doing, you know, and even what's happening even now, like we got the send coming up. You know, to really release a generation to be what God has called them to be and do what God has called them to do and, and activate them. And so one of my passions is to see a generation activated and yep. unlocked because they have stuff that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They got stuff that you don't have. Mm -hmm. And if we just as, you know, as a former generation in a way, it's weird calling myself a former yeah, generation, yeah. right? <laughs> but like almost like releasing them and saying, hey, we're with you, we're for you, we bless you, go for it. I think something special is going to happen. I feel like they are all born with this desire to influence. Like we talk about even posting on YouTube, posting on social media. They're not trying to get 500 likes or views. They want millions. And mm. so like they have this inside, like I want to influence. I want to influence big and I want to change this world. Like when, if you tell them, hey, you're going to be a world changer. Like, yeah, I know. Like, yeah, I know. They can't make their bed yet. Yeah. But they're gonna be they know they're gonna be a world yeah. changer. Mm -hmm. Our generation would be like, no, no, no. I just wanna go work a nine to five. Yeah. Like I just yeah. wanna go work a nine to five. I just wanna be safe. But this generation is like, no, I'm gonna change risk. this world. I'm gonna risk it. Risk it I am all. not gonna play it safe. And so a lot of times we look at that as a bad thing. That's yeah. not a bad thing. Yeah. God never killed the passion in his disciples. Mm. He just corrected it, mm -hmm. right? He never said, you're not going to be a world changer. Correction. He needed them to be world changer. He just said, hey, yep. you think it's going to be from top, but it's going to be from the bottom. You serve. You serve and you become a world changer. So and good. so I feel like this generation has that already in them. Like, I will be great. But now us as good leaders, us as fathers, have to now go, go, uh, guide it and correct it and say, hey, I want you to be great and you will be great and you're supposed to be great and you're yeah. destined to be great and you're destined to reach all these people. But here's the proper way to do mm -hmm. it. It's wow. not what society is telling you. It's this way. Yeah. You know what's interesting? This generation, they are not Facebook generation. Mm -hmm. I feel like they are not Instagram generation. They're, they are not TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. TikTok generation. Because Facebook... It's like we use a Facebook just to show people that we exist. Then Instagram, Instagram showed people what we have. But the TikTok, 
it's what we can do. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's a manifestation. It's like a platform to manifest. Hmm. Instagram is a platform to show what we have. Mm -hmm. Facebook is more like who we are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the, the, the way are living is, is the next generation is like TikTok generation. I don't know what's gonna what's happening next <laughs> after that. But you know, Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> Twitter's gonna be reborn. <laughs> but listen, yeah, so good, uh, so good to have you guys, yeah. and so good to be with you people. Yeah. And we thanks for do, joining we, us. We will Thank do this often, you know, just uh, just like this. We're gonna sit down and talk more about different yeah, di different fun. topics, different so stuff. What's cool. happening right now in this time, you know as a leaders, as a pastors, as a ministers, but thank you so much. So we want to invite you, um, start, starting from tomorrow yeah. uh, for the youth conference. And then the next week we, we're going to have a vision conference and we're going to touch five focused on the fivefold focus on the fivefold ministry. Yes. You're going to hear, you're going to hear it a lot. I'm so excited. You're going to so, hear it a lot. The, the body know. needs this. They need to understand. They need to understand the, the difference. The fivefold isn't just for the chosen. The fivefold is for the body to yeah. understand. To the activate, whole body needs the fivefold. To equip and activate the whole body. Yeah. yeah. That the body of God will, 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 be, will become an ecclesia. Mm. You know, because now what we see more is the Sunday service gathering. But I believe the more we're going to come back to the fivefold ministry, because you cannot activate the whole body without fivefold ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're going to talk about this more. It's exciting. I'm so yeah. excited. Mish, thank you so much. Sergey, thank you, you so much. Andre, it's thank you so here. much. Andre, yeah. uh, thank you for hosting this. Alexey, thank you so much. Uh, no. Yes. We bless you guys. Media we team, love you guys are you. the best. Yeah. yeah. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned. God awesome. bless you. We love you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's amen. go. Good times. <laughs>